All right, thank you for coming today and working with me and helping me get through this assignment. I'd like to, Mr. Um, Professor Willie, I'd like to introduce Rachel. She's our teacher for ELAR Elementary. Elementary. And Miss Whitney Nelson, she's a teacher. Secondary for math. Secondary. I'm Miss G, secondary ELAR. And I'm Gail Parker, and I'm elementary math. Good. All right, ladies, the purpose of the meeting is to prepare a walkthrough form that a principal could use at Harper Elementary. And Nicole Powell is my mentor. And so I am pretending I'm a principal at Harper and I need to prepare a walkthrough form. It needs to be on one page, simple um, and meaningful. All right, so the second thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, review the taper report. Um, Mr. Willie, we did go over this a little bit before we started the video just to get uh, a better grasp of what this report was because we didn't feel like there was enough time for it. Um, <clears throat> then we'll do examples of walkthrough forms. You have those in the back here. And then we'll brainstorm, which is part I hope we get to. And um, we're going to ask ourselves, do we want our walkthrough form to have boxes? narratives or both and it's our it's our brainstorming it's us working together collaborating together and putting together so please talk because i don't want to be the only one talking in this video all right and then you don't have to write it up i'll write it up as we go through it okay and we'll be done with it any questions all right, all right so let's review the taper report we already went over it what is one of the couple of things that you guys thought that was meaningful Anybody have any ideas? I learned that the asterisks have a footnote on the back page. I did not know that prior to examining the report. So now I have a better understanding of why some of the data is missing. Yeah, good. Um, page four, <clears throat> are we pleased at Harper Elementary with our all subject progress? Yes, yes. we're all. Yes. We have gains on approaches, meets, and masters. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Now we could we could divvy it up and we could go down to math if we wanted to. Ms. Parker, are you pleased with math and what they've done across the board? I am. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. And Rachel? Indeed. Yeah. I think it's pretty good overall. All right, so whatever we're doing is working. Whatever we're doing is working. Absolutely. All right, um, moving on. The next page I thought was interesting. Now the taper report, I should uh, let you know that um, this is our Texas Academic Performance Report. And it's not, the latest report is 2017-18. Uh, this is the latest report, okay? Our school at that time, uh, Harbor Elementary met standards um, and we are, we're doing well overall at that year point. Um, attendance rate, <clears throat> that is page 10, it's at the top, mm -hmm. um, we're above state and district, district. Our, our students are doing well, although I don't know the exact number, but I think Whitney, you said it was 98%, that's a good shooting number, a good goal is 98%, so. and it will get us into our, um, Top 10 comparison group. Our top 10 comparison groups. All right. I think our district does a good job of trying to make the needs of making sure the students are in class. Yes, yes. they do. Yes, and calling parents all the time. Mm -hmm. Valuing our instructional time. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> um, then page 17, probably the last page. We have 518 students present 2017-18 um, on campus. What do you notice is significant about these students on page 17? The greatest number of students is in fifth grade. Am I reading that correctly? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that was uh, that was a huge class for Ms. Vickery because she still had her four classes. What was it five? Does she have five classes or four? No, she has four classes, doesn't she? Yeah. And that put her at 25. 
Mm. So that there were gains in fifth grade in every yeah. area is significant, considering that their class size, the class size was bigger, caseload. Yeah. Right. Sixty-four percent of our students in Harper are Hispanic. Is that what you figured it out to be? It's right there. In oh the yes, I see. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And what? Three hundred thirty-two. So as a walkthrough form, what should we look at? Do you think what should we should be looking at in a walkthrough form at Harper? Accommodations and strategies that are geared toward English language learners and that respect the culture of the Hispanic population. Okay. Perhaps. Am I wrong? No. What do you think? Anybody think we should? Well, looking also at our helps as far as making sure we're oh yeah, two hundred nine. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, forty percent of our kids. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's huge. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Forty percent, and our Hispanic population is sixty-four percent. Something other, uh, another significant thing is seventy percent of our students are eco dis and 66% of our students are at risk, so. Mm -hmm. So we do a walkthrough form, what, what, sh what should I look for as a principal? If I was to come into your classroom, what, what would you want me to observe? That these students uh, that are labeled as eco or at risk are actively engaged in my classroom. Okay. It is concerning to me that there's only one counselor when we have 66% of our students out of over 500, so that's almost 300 students. Am I correct, math, <laughs> math people? Per that are that are at risk, and we only have a single counselor to serve. In addition to teachers who obviously serve their emotional needs, or who that's an added burden. Yeah, agree. To be responsible for that, in addition to getting them prepared to pass a STAR test. Well, not only just for the fact of with only one counselor, but it's very hard for the teachers to keep up with who is identified and making mm -hmm. sure they're identified. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In the classroom, absolutely. So, I mean, that would, you could also look think about, like, groupings with that. Oh, yes. Um, okay. About, you know, proximity, too, with those students. Where are those kids located in the room? Are they with other English language learners? Are they with... Paired together. Yeah, just how the groupings are set up in your classroom. That's, that's perfect. So we can look at, are they actively engaged? Do we have any um, strategies, accommodations that are helping the CELL learners be successful in proximity in the classroom? Mm -hmm. So other things as well. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else on that page? I was thinking when we look at the walkthrough form, we might also be, like we say actively engaged, but we also need to be sensitive to the Maslow's hierarchy of needs and the basic needs of these students. So I was thinking, you know, if you did a walkthrough and you had a student who had like, you know, maybe some cereal that was provided by the teacher or something, am I wrong in thinking that that would be an appropriate accommodation? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. And would we, would we want to put that on the, the walkthrough form? No, but I was just thinking that keep that in mind and be sympathetic. Yeah. Yeah, and that might be that might be the the narrative part of it, where we want do we you know when we get to that form, do we want checks or do we want narrative or a combination of both? I typically lean towards a combination of both. You when know. you say narrative, like you're talking about like scripting. Yes, okay. scripting. Okay, scripting it out like like she could say what was actually happening, or she could write a side note. Hey, student X or one was needing cereal first. Okay. Yeah, for hunger. All right, anything else on the taper report that you want to look at? Um, we talked about staff, the, um, the number of students per teacher is 15.4. That's found on page 19 at the very bottom. We already laughed a lot about the point six, you know, how, how, do, you, how do you get a part of the teacher? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, so. Also, we, we're looking at, if you look at the very bottom of 19, it talks about the experience of the teachers. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's very, yeah. the one to five years is the, the, yeah, the highest. highest. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
But yes. then 11 to 20 is the second. Yes. That's interesting. So there are probably mentor teachers in there that are helping out those beginning teachers. Yes. 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 So in 1718, we only had two brand new teachers. I'd like to know who those brand new teachers were. Hmm. And then, um, you know, because now we're trying to think back a long time ago. Yeah. Who, who was back then? I know something to note is if we look at our, you know, student population Hispanic to white, we look at our teacher population Hispanic to white. Yes. Um, our teacher population with white is at 25.8 and our Hispanic is only 4.8. So I'm not saying that um, some of those white teachers aren't maybe bilingual um, or they are, their native language is, Hispan is Spanish, but um, hopefully we're being able to service our students with enough bilingual teachers. Is that in here anywhere? I don't see, see that. Mm -hmm. But that would be something for for the principal to investigate, even as they hire for new teachers coming in. Yeah. I'm not sure that would be part Important of the Important number walkthrough now. Yeah. There is on page 21, it says teachers by program, bilingual ESL education. There's 4.5. Mm. 4.5. So about half was that teacher who split a campus. Mm. Yes, mm -hmm. you're exact. That's a mm -hmm. Katya. Yes. Where she split, where she went to one or the other. Absolutely. Sorry. No, this one. I guess it's not important. Don't want to walk through. No, it's just important. It's just neat to look at. Yeah. All right. So we've gone through that. Now look. Let's go ahead and move um, to the next section, let's look at examples of walkthrough forms. Just, I know this is the first that you've looked at them. The first one is Rachel. She brought this to the table. This is predict, um, predominantly for ELAR. Mm -hmm. The second one, uh, the next ones are the ones that I've, um, I've just pulled off the internet. Mm -hmm. Different variety. All mm -hmm. different. Yeah, all different forms. I never thought about some of these things. Yeah. So. Okay, so checklist. This one's check marks. This one is. Like scripting. Yes. This is a check mark. This is a plus or minus with comments. Which one is plus or minus with this the last one? Yes. Which one looks most appealing? Oh, when wait, you look this at one is scoring like is it zero or three. Yes, this is like uh, one, two, three. Not there. I don't know. So this being the first walkthrough form Either. that yeah. we've already done, I don't feel like this seems a little overwhelming. Yeah, this yes. is, and remember, it only has to, it can only be one page. And this okay. looks a little bit more like something. Yeah, this one too. This is my favorite. Uh, that's one. This is my favorite too. However, I do like <coughs> this one. How it takes into account the organization, the culture of the classroom. Which I've been in classrooms that have a very negative vibe, and then the general academic. I like that. I wish that we could combine those categories. However, I haven't looked at this one closely enough. Maybe it does have a space. Well, the thing is, here's what is your main goal? Is it to observe the teacher as far as yeah. what are you looking for? Is that the fact of some, sometimes, some depending on the teacher, they can go into a blank classroom and, uh, you know, the teacher. The look like a master. Right. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't like our main goal is to yeah. look for what in a, in a checklist. And but you don't want to knock the floaters, like maybe the ELL teachers that have the fluff. And yes, have all the, and that have a shared classroom that's used for something else. So they may walk in and not have. However, we have said in the past that one of our big pet peeves. No. no. One of our big <laughs> pet peeves is classroom organization or desk arrangement that mm -hmm. has students in pods with their backs to the main instruction. Mm -hmm. I agree. Or that has the desks in such a way that students cannot access or the teachers cannot access the students at all. So you wonder how they're doing any sort of 
formative assessments or giving feedback to the students. Well, here's okay. one thing, as far as on physical organization, one of the categories that, it, that we were talking about earlier in the classroom space is arranged two different whole class, small groups, and individual. That's something that you might want to have included in something else as far as, as this checklist. The fact of, Rachel, what you were saying is, can the teacher meet the needs of all of these areas? Mm -hmm. So you guys, honest, I, I really do think physical arrangement really needs to be incorporated. But do you guys like this yes. flow? Yes. I like this. Yes. You like As this a teacher? I would like. Yes. As a, and the whole thing is, is that when you get done with this, remember in a walkthrough form, you take this back with you, and you sit down and you have your um, reflection meeting with the teacher. Mm -hmm. And we want it to be something that they can get information from and grow from. I like how. It feels a little bit like whenever, if you know, as a teacher, you're like, you want to get all the checklists. So I like how on this one, how it has a plus or a minus, and then it also has NA. So you, do, if they didn't observe that in the classroom, do you think it's do you, not important? Wendy, do you think it would be beneficial to not put plus or minus, but to put one, two, three, or four on it, or do you think that's too, too busy? I don't know. I think it helps with knowing you really got it or you don't. I don't know. And then there's not I don't there's not a you it. just didn't do it at all. There's a okay, you were trying to do it. You need to you But know. you need you it's somewhat evident but this is where you need growth in. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhat. Mm -hmm. I, I like the I one thing I liked about this was the zero one two three mm -hmm. because it does give a, a sliding scale. Mm -hmm. Versus like what you just said, negative or a positive. Yeah, but then you think a zero and it's a zero is not observed, but whenever I think of zero, it's like, oh, I didn't do like it's you know, is it a negative thing or is it something that just didn't happen? Okay. You know what I mean? I see. Yeah, so it should be NA instead of zero. Yeah, maybe well, no, there's a Z, there should be a zero and an NA because the zero says you're supposed to be doing it but you didn't. The NA says it didn't apply to that lesson because I was only in there for the whole group part and yeah. not the Cool. Small group. But then the one equals on this one, then it's not evident. Okay, you're right. So if you were to leave it as not evident, the person would still not, not feel like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I think that I'm shifting my thinking just a little bit, but I think that we should focus maybe our checklist or our form should have some a lot of the EL slash Hispanic mm -hmm. stuff in it, it. Yes. Embedded. Incorporated into mm -hmm. it. Since that is such a hot topic at this campus. Yep. And perhaps one for eco dis mm -hmm. so we need to make sure that I incorporate that in here that but we like this for um, what? And up here, if you look up here in the very top portion, it has um, program and level, grouping format, number of students. It does have this little bit right here that does include the physical arrangement. So what I would like to do, if you think it's appropriate, would be to take this piece of information and put it more like this in here. So it's a box that we mm -hmm. can check. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's, is that mm -hmm. a good idea? Okay, yeah. so I'll put this as a box form because that's something you guys said we needed to do. All right, where do we want to start looking? Um, I think we have like what, what, how many minutes, Mr. Brown? You're at 19. 19, so we have about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on where we can um, make sure that we are looking at ELL strategies, accommodations, that as we walk into a classroom, we can. Mm -hmm. readily see those. How long do you think a walkthrough should be? 15 minutes. This says five minutes. It depends on what's going on in the classroom because if you get there and then five minutes after you arrive there's a transition time. Mm -hmm. I think that is a very difficult for a teacher to feel comfortable. I, I witness teachers getting very flustered during transition time because they think that their students are uh, exhibiting behaviors that are unwanted but they're they're usually just pretty normal so does that make sense mm -hmm. so if you come in and then five minutes later 
the teacher transitions to something else, then I feel like that five minutes should suffice unless you're observing the transition time, which is, as a teacher, I would not want to be okay. judged on that. But if you had a five to 15 minute observation form, or do you really need the time up there? You're not going to see all this. You're not going to no. See. no, you're not going to see all this. No. So I think that the time, I'm going to take this top part off, I know that. I'm just going to put time in, time out. So you know how long you were right, yeah. in the in the classroom. Sometimes and what you can see you observed. what yeah. you need to see in a certain amount of time, depending on, like you said, is are they teaching a lesson? Are they working through a lesson versus are students working? Are they in the yeah. Groups? Okay. Yes. Sir. Okay. All right. Let's look at some ELL. I think <clears throat> that was our biggest focus. Um, we said ELL accommodations. Are they actively engaged? Grouping. I think that uh, how they're grouped in the class, proximity in the classroom. Because um, I really like this form. I, when I pulled it off the web, I was like, <laughs> it is a good one. It's easy, mm -hmm. and you can mm -hmm. move quickly through it. Something like to the effect of evidence of um, under this one right here. Which one? Explicit it, instruction? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I was thinking like another like Another whole box? Yeah. Okay. Evidence of um, evidence of, I can't get it out. Like, not accommodations, but for ELLs? Yes. yes. Is that just teaching strategy? Yeah. Okay. So like maybe if you've got sixty percent of your clientele in one class that's ELL, would that be what they're they have we have every day? Mm -hmm. So would you encourage teachers after you present something important in English? to then pause and say, turn and talk, like lots mm. of turning and talking and allow students to speak in their first language if needed for clarification, especially when conferring with other students in the class because you are not their native speaker. So the evidence of that and then the examples might be uh, strategies like turn and talk, um, mm -hmm. even like dictionary use or yes, that's um, vocab vocab wall. Mm -hmm. Well, that yes, but yes. So students were always focusing on the aspects of the listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Mm -hmm. Are they evident in that classroom mm -hmm. as far as the teacher yes. is doing versus the student? Are you having the students speak? Are you having... Are students speaking? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which is also an engagement strategy if students are just sitting and getting... And it's also a student-centered strategy. I just, yes, that's right. I just put a way in. to show that your classroom is student-centered, which is like the huge buzzword. And it's an easy way to make your classroom student-centered. And it's great for transitions because you give students a task that they enjoy, which is talking, and then you go get ready for <laughs> your next thing. Well, and Ms. Small has said repeatedly to me, are the students talking? Yes. <laughs> is it the teacher talking or are the students You're talking? Even yes, because they have to mer they have to walk through that ability to talk mm -hmm. and to express their ideas. Right. So okay, so what I have for evidence of effective strategies for ELL, that was the overhead target, the category, mm -hmm. dictionary usage, um, vocabulary word wall, and access <coughs> to the dictionaries. What did you would you say? Access to the dictionaries are they? in close proximity or do students have to like sneak around to go get them? Mm -hmm. Okay, so like they're available. Um, are students speaking? Are they taking time for students to speak? Mm -hmm. And is the instruction student-centered? Mm -hmm. Anything else under there that we would want to? Um, any maybe anchor charts of some Oh yeah, sort. absolutely, thank you. That's a great one. <clears throat> absolutely, that's a huge one. Now do you guys uh, in your just a thought. You guys put out the um, 
Yeah, I lost because he said 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. I lost my thought. Mm -hmm. um, in Spanish, do you put the words in Spanish? Well, remember, we are supposed to, with the academic vocabulary, we're supposed to give the words in reading and write in um, Spanish and English. Okay. Words. So we're going to look for that, too. Mm -hmm. Or you're supposed to, if you provide it only in English, you're supposed to provide a pictorial reference. Okay. Mm -hmm. Spanish. And mm -hmm. both is even better. Right. Because I see a lot of teachers that have things in their classroom labeled in English, Spanish, it's right underneath, like yes. a light switch, and there's right. a picture. Good. Okay. Anything else? What was it, a couple of our other things? Oh, grouping. Yes. Um, and that she's was... Gonna, I think she's going to include that into the yes. physical organization. Yes. Okay. Uh, what do you, <clears throat> we're going to do that. We're going to make another whole one here. Um, physical organization because we've all talked about that when we walk into a room mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. they have their back to the board mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. are they focused can they easily see the board the teacher can't reach them yeah they don't have a, a power zone a path mm -hmm. to walk because it's it has to do with management and effective teaching right yes mm -hmm. it's so important so something to the effect of um, effective physical um, effective organization of the classroom yeah well, effective wait, classroom organization physical organization on this one I like that one what did you say Rachel physical organization yes so is there as the teacher teaching in the power is there an area for a power zone our students um, easily access Furniture is set up to support student independence, efficiency, and safety. Yeah. I don't like this one. Supplies are organized, labeled, and easily accessible by students to foster responsibility. I think the classroom needs to be organized, but I don't yeah. think we need to. I don't, I don't think, think that's very simple to put as far as when you walk in to see. Yeah. It's not priority right yeah. now. Okay. Mm -hmm. As far like um, under that, do we want to include um, like where are our kids that are our high priority students? Are they in the areas that we want them to Provincial be? Provincial seating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And also, our students sitting beside each other who can help each other. Like, if you have an ELL student, are they partnered with another student who can help them move to that next level? Okay, anything else? And do you guys like the way everything else is on this one here? Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be. Well, I don't know if I really want to put this focus academic, uh, phenomic. That's. That's um, ELL. ELR. Mm -hmm. ELR specific. I think I'm going to take this off. Mm -hmm. I do like the fact that you do have somewhat of a common sense. I do too. A lot, but I know that sometimes it's just the fact that mm -hmm. you witness something that is not there that you want to drag on the teacher. Yes. You know, and, you know yeah. he's candy next to him. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and you know what I was thinking would be good <coughs> is to, to have positive positive comment to remind the principal to put here positive yeah. comment and then perhaps suggestion comment mm -hmm. or suggestion for improvement and you don't have to fill out both but then that would remind do you want two different boxes Rachel do you want two different boxes or do you want it just all in one like positive suggestion I think just affirmation okay Anything else, ladies, you want to add? All of this to it. Now, in all honesty, as, as we move forward in our, does this seem reasonable to do? Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think that it would be wonderful to sit down with teachers and get their feedback on how they would like to be observed and what they think is fair and beneficial. Yeah. I love, yeah, I love that. As a teacher? Yeah, and especially, you know, you always tell people that you want to provide students with a rubric ahead of time so that they know what they're going to be graded on. Oh, yeah. So this... Um, well, I think a T-test, you know, our observation, you know, the way we, we get observed, 
that should be part of the skeleton of this. Mm -hmm. You know, what are we looking for here? Uh, but anyways, all right. Ms. Brown? Thank you. Uh, thank you for joining me, ladies. I appreciate it very much, and look forward to working with you.